Hey, so this is a great question. Uh, this user asks, what are some examples of initiatives you were procrastinating on? Just curious, thanks. Uh, this is in response to a video where I was talking about burnout as a software developer, and I have my own rule that I follow that you're welcome to follow too if it works for you. It works really well for me. I don't know if it'll work for others, but it's what I follow. It's my one week rule. So what I find is that when I'm working on a product, pro like a project at work, if I start to procrastinate on that project, for more than a week, then I know something's wrong. Now, let me clarify what I mean, because a lot of people have questions when it comes to that. It doesn't mean that I'm not doing work for a week. It means that I will procrastinate on the main thing I know needs to get done with other work. So I'm still providing value. People are still happy with my output. I'm still doing the thing that I'm paid to do, which is, you know, great. That's fine. But I know that there's some main task. It might be a little bit daunting. I have to figure out why I'm procrastinating it. Do I have to talk to a team or I have to schedule meetings? And I just, I would like to avoid meetings if I can. Um, is it because I don't feel like I can iterate on something quickly? Is it because I feel like the rules of it are not defined clearly and I won't be able to be productive? There's a lot of things I've learned to look out for. These are all signs I look for for myself when it comes to things that are important to me. That's important for me to feel productive and be able to iterate quickly on code and stuff that I want to work on. So if I get procrastinate, if I start procrastinating on other work, typically it'll be for a couple hours. At max, I'll procrastinate for three days. If it's any more than that, I know it's a problem. So this is why I came up with the week rule. I chose roughly two times my max because I know if I hit two times my max, something is wrong. Something is absolutely 100% wrong. So to get back to the question here, um, what are some examples? Uh, some examples are just like bigger projects that I'm working on. So like um, I'm trying to think of uh, projects I've worked on in the past. Uh, maybe I have to ship like a new piece of software. I've had to do this in the past. I've had to write software where I have to synchronize with like two different teams. So, you know, I'm on team A. I have to synchronize with B and C. They both have needs and they're relying on me, team A, to produce the tool. So I have to write some tool that takes in information from B, takes in information from C, and synthesizes it with what I know. So I'll start getting conflicting information from them. Team B is like, we needed to do this. And team C is like, no, we also, we, we actually needed to do this. Then they start giving me things that are mutually exclusive. So I can't, I can't satisfy both of their constraints. They're asking me like, oh, this needs to pull data from this server. And the other team's like, that server is not used. We actually need to pull data from this repository. And it's like, do we have multiple sources of truth? Because when you have multiple sources of truth, we don't actually have a source of truth. I hope you guys know that. If we have two places to look and then we decide to create that secret third thing, we don't just have the final source of truth. We just have three poorly defined sources of truth. So things like that, I'll start procrastinating on and I'll go do other things. I'll do code review for people that need it. I'll go work on other bugs, the uh, technical debt that we have piled up. So I'm still getting things done. I'm still being productive. This project might be out for months so I can procrastinate for a couple days, that's fine. But if it starts going too long, if I start slipping too long, self-governance has to kick in and I have to say, I gotta figure out what's going on here. So I hope that answers your question.